Hey there guys, how's it going? I'm Cyclist Blogger, and today is the Stage 3 review of the Tour de France. It was a kind of hilly stage, um, but it ended with the pack coming together at the end, and it was a day for the sprinters. It was a, a pretty quiet stage, uh, with only two riders going up the road at the beginning. They only really started to get interesting at 71.2 kilometers to go when there was a two-man break up the road with about three-minute gap. It was uh, Thomas Vockler and Fosenko off the front, both Frenchmen flying a flag for the French, so they were pretty happy about that one. And as you can see here, the peloton is basically taking no interest at all. Yeah, basically they're not taking any interest at all at trying to catch that group up the front. And the tour tracker is useless. Yeah, no, it just kept dropping out constantly. At about 64 kilometers to go, the gap finally becomes starts to come down a little bit, with the gap now being at about 215, 216 or so, with the peloton having a bit more organization. But still, really, they're taking no interest, and this actually ended up being one of the slowest stages of the Tour de France that I've ever watched. The peloton was just doing nothing. The gap continues to uh, slowly decrease to the group off the front. Here we can see Vokla right down on the bars. The gap's now at about a minute 28. Here we can see the breakaway group on the front about cut to come through the intermediate sprint. Is it there going to be fireworks? No. No, there's not. The sprint isn't contested. Bokla just sits behind Francois. And and they just cruise up across the line. That was probably the most boring sprint that I've ever watched. And they haven't even crossed the line yet. Here they come. They're coming to the line. 50 meters. And, and that sprint was really, really quite boring. Here we see the main peloton coming to the intermediate sprint with uh, Kittle going straight off the front and, and no one could follow him. Cavendish tries uh, to attempt to do it. Gripel is way off the back there and Sargon tries to come around but Kittle had that very, very easily. That's probably the most exciting part besides from the sprint at the end that happened all day just there. That's it. At about 45 k's to go, the gap has come down dramatically due to that intermediate sprint. The gap is now at about 50 seconds, and in a minute, we're going to see some very impressive bidons uh, jamming into a jersey. Yeah, that is quite impressive. One of the Lotto Sedal riders distributing bidons to his teammates. At this point, you can see that a lot of different teams are coming up to the front. There you can see Sagan in yellow. A lot of different teams are coming up to the front now, taking lots of interest in the chase because they wanted to get their men to the front at the point at which the catch is made in, st in case of any counter-attacks. My question is, is that a giant spider that they've put on a roundabout? It looks like an enormous spider. I honestly think that the TV network should invest in more shots like this, like that shot is incredibly cool. That's not even sarcasm. That's an awesome shot of them coming through there. Jesus Christ, look at the size of that wall. That is actually a massive wall on the outskirts of this town. And on top of that wall, which is one of the oldest standing city, um, city limit walls, is more impressive uh, displays, you could say, by people. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a lot of effort just for about 30 seconds on TV. And since there's no racing, they decided to show the tractor protests. They seem to be forever ongoing in the countryside of France. And just behind this massive ass church, you can see the dead centre of town. That is, in fact, a massive graveyard. Since the peloton is basically doing absolutely nothing to chase down the break. Like we're going to show this river for the third time today, or maybe it's the fourth time today, but honestly how many times are they going to show this river? It's not even a good looking river. 
but they showed it at least 10 times during this broadcast, and they mentioned it at least another 20 more times. And yeah, it was slightly ridiculous how many times they showed this river. And I'm just going to show you how long they showed this river for. They're still showing it. Yep, this is all at the same speed, but this is pretty cool. I'd, I'd like to do this. Um, this is actually on land, by the way. They're um, massive, massive hovercrafts. It looks like they're actually doing some kind of weird racing. This is much more exciting than the racing, anyway, that's going on um, on the actual road. Hovercraft ra racing looks like where it is at. Yeah, and uh, the peloton is basically going to do nothing until they catch the break, and they're just going to leave them out as long as possible. This is the breakaway at the moment. You can see Buckler there. Yep. Nothing is going to happen until the peloton catches the break. Look, they look so excited. Not. The break has increased their gap to about 54 seconds with 21 k's to go. And they've initiated the very fun game of cat and mouse with the peloton. So this basically dragged out for ages. And they just sat out there for ages. Finally, at about 15 k's to go, the peloton actually decreases the gap to about 20 seconds. So they're actually starting to actually catch them finally. And Team Sky and Lotto Sudel, I believe, are on the front at the moment. And they're actually trying to ca catch them now. And they've got their uh, lead up trains ready soon. You know Vokla is pushing really hard when he starts to make these kind of faces. There we have the famous Vokla faces with his tongue out. And the bobbing up and down as well. Yeah, Vokla is really going for it now. He's just going to push all the way to the end, right up until that peloton catches him. As you can see here, at about 10 kilometers to go, the gap is quite small at this point. But Vokla is still really, really pushing on those pedals. The gap is now only about 10 seconds or so. Like, Vokla is literally already caught. But he is still sprinting, he is still pushing. You really have to give him credit for how hard he pushes all the way up to the end. And here we can see just on the right hand side there, Vokla and Francois going to the back of the peloton, most likely to be spat out the back again of the peloton. So they are finally caught and all of the teams are starting to organise their lead out trains with 7.9 to go. It's now an incredibly fast run into the line with Dimension Data, Eric Sky, Lotto Sudel, and Lotto Eno Jumbo all up to the front with their lead out trains. Just here we get a great example of how close they get to the traffic furniture and how good the bike handling skills are of those in the pro peloton. These helicopter shots have majorly improved over the years. That's a really incredible shot showing how spread out the peloton is at that point. After navigating all the roundabouts and all the traffic furniture, the peloton has become quite spread out with only a couple lead out trains still on the front there. I noticed at th the end of the stage that this run in was almost as crazy as the run in from yesterday, as you can see they're diving across the road just to avoid this traffic furniture, and they're very, very tight to those roundabout walls and so on. So Dimension Data has come to the front at this point, and Edix is still kind of there. Everyone hasn't been quite organised as of yet, but they're about to get their lead-out trains ready. As you can see, Kennedale Garmin are just there, and so are Dimension Data. Due to all the roundabouts and so on, the peloton has just been stretched out into a very, very long line. Um, and there's about to be a shot here which will show you how far out the peloton has now been spread, uh, with there being kind of a split in the peloton at this point. There you can see just there, there's a bit of a split behind that main chunk of the peloton because of how fast they're actually going at this point. If you're not up in that front group there, there isn't much chance that you're going to be able to get into the sprint. As you can see, there's a couple edicts over on the right there, and then there's Kennedale Garmin. I mentioned Dardo are getting ready to uh, launch Mark Cavendish just there, and here we can see that Peter Sagan doesn't actually have a lead out train. If you could see him in the yellow just behind the blues of Eric's quick step there, 
Uh, he actually doesn't have a lead up train at this point. He's actually just following different wheels. As you can see there again, the peloton quite majorly split now with most of the sprinters up in contention now, up in that main group there. I'm going to take you all the way to the end from this point here. So this will be just a straight commentary from what I have in my notes that I've written down. As you can see, uh, Dimitri Dada is still on the front there. They're coming up to a sharp left-hand turn very soon. And that um, causes a few issues for a couple of the riders. Dimitri Dada has sort of faded away a bit. There's only about two or three riders up the front there. And as you can see, there is a oh, bike exchange on the right-hand side there. This is where it causes some issues. And one of the Olka oh, bike exchange riders hits the wall there. And there he is there. It's the Vitell sign. No uh, harm done. Everyone else gets around okay. Um, it was it's a, as you can see from just on the motorbike shot here. It's a, a pretty wide corner, so it must have just been a mistake from that Oracle rider. The Oracle rider um, that was part of the lead out trade is still on the front there, so he's ended up actually leading out the Edix train, which has gone straight around there. There's a major split in the peloton now due to that. Um, corner previously. As you can see, Edix and Dimension Data are really controlling on the fight, but there's Greifel just in behind the Olka Bike Exchange uh, rider, and then there's Peter Sagan just in behind him. Um, Edix is still on the front with Dimension Data and Greifel following very closely. There's a final right-hand kink coming up very uh, quickly, uh, with one kilometer to go now. Greifel seems to be turning it up a bit, but he... He's just waiting. He's just waiting for the right moment at this point. That's an awful shot. We can't see anything. Thanks for that. And we're about to come around the right-hand corner. Right hand for the riders. It'll be left hand for us. And here they come. Whoever gets through this corner first will be the one that will really be able to turn it up and might have a chance of getting the sprint. Here we see there's Greifel and then there's Cav just in behind Greifel. There's the Lotto Sidel lead out, and then there's the, the Dimension Data lead out. Greifel is just in behind there. It goes Greifel, Cav, and then Sagan getting ready to line it up. Greifel goes for it first. He makes the first kick. Sagan has already kicked. He is already gone out behind. Cavendish and, Ca uh, Cavendish and Greifel go for it. Sagan is behind, and it looks like it ended up being Cavendish that took the win. Uh, I think it was by like two or three millimeters. It was an incredibly, incredibly close finish between Cavendish and Greifel. Obviously the overall stays the same. Um, I believe it went Cavendish, Greifel and then another rider. I'm not sure who. I'm sorry about that one. Um, but it was basically just a very slow stage that ended with a hectic, hectic sprint which meant Greifel and Cavendish going head to head. So I was really waiting to see when that happened. Here's the finish just here. Cavendish got it just. And then the rider over on the over on the far side instead of Sagan getting third. As you can see, Cavendish still looking at his Garmin. But yeah, that was a it was a bait it was a pretty slow stage. Um but that's the second time Cavendish has gotten the win. I don't like his green suit though, that green suit is pretty awful. As you can see, Greifel actually celebrates a bit, but he's not actually sure about it. So, and then Cavendish obviously celebrates just here. So, congratulations to Cavendish, that was a pretty awesome sprint. He launched it pretty late on, hence why it was so close at the end there. But, that's all for today. I'm the Cyclist Vlogger, here you can see Cavendish winning. That's all for today, and I will see you tomorrow.